Imagine this, a company posts a job offer for a UX designer and you're like, oh, that looks perfect for me. So you click the button and then 956 other people also apply. Yeah, 957 replies to a single job offer in just three hours. Has the world gone insane? What has Elon Musk got to do with it? Is it really getting worse? And why in November 2022 was a defining moment for this huge decline in job offers in tech? How to predict when a next moment like that comes and what salaries should you expect? So in short, where the f are all the jobs? I'm gonna answer all of these today and at the end I'm gonna tell you why it's actually not as bad as you might think and it's getting better for juniors. It seems like it's impossible to get a job as a designer right now, right? Looking at the average numbers of tech layoffs at Layoffs FYI, it shows 260,000 people got fired in 2023 and 80,000 in 2024. Since we're in a third of a year already, it seems like the total number will be roughly similar. But to better understand the tough job market in all of tech, not just design, as of today, we need to first think about what happened in 2021 slash 2022. Because everyone was forced to stay home. Companies that were selling online goods and services were booming. Everybody was doing everything online, so obviously they needed more people, more developers, more designers, and even more marketers and product managers. The excessive hiring of that era was mostly due to heavily increased demand, and that demand dropped once we got outside and touched the grass again. But the economy also reversed. High inflation and rising interest rates led to companies not being able to afford borrowing money as they used to, meaning they had less money to spend on more people and instead, well, they were forced to optimize. And the easiest way to optimize is simply to decrease the workforce. Almost everybody had a job in 2021 and 2022, but then came November of that year and Elon Musk carrying a sink walked into Twitter HQ. And you might think what you want about Elon Musk. You can like him, you can hate him. It doesn't really matter because what he did ultimately changed the landscape and it has amplified the current job situation. What he did right after he let go of that sink was firing 80% of people at Twitter. The media were very fast to criticize saying that that company is gonna fail because they don't have enough people and it's only a matter of days, then weeks, then months and well, what really happened is even though Twitter decreased in value, but many companies back then were overvalued, it's actually doing better than ever, especially in terms of profit to cost ratio. So not only did it not fail, but it actually saved millions in the process and it's still out there and still relevant. And one thing you can't deny Elon is influence. Because when more companies notice that you can fire 80% of people and have very little difference in how the company operates, well, obviously they're going to try to emulate that. And that only ramped up their optimization efforts, which led to the largest firing spree in tech called the Dark January. It wasn't really called like that, but it was a pretty dark January. Almost 90,000 people lost their job in the US alone in one month. Worldwide, the number is obviously a lot bigger. So why can't you find a job? The junior market is extremely difficult because a lot of those people that were laid off from various companies already had some experience. And because there's less demand right now, companies can actually use it to their advantage and they can ask those mid-level and senior people to accept lower wages. And for a company, if they accept those lower wages, it's actually better to hire somebody that has at least some actual working experience because it's a lot faster to get that person going and making money for the company because that's the main goal. They don't hire you to pay you to have a happy life. No, they hire you because they want you to make them more money. And if you take longer to onboard and understand the processes and understand how design works and get your shit sorted, basically, then it's just going to take longer for them to make money off of you. But some of those senior people 
are also way more expensive and they want back down to a lower wage and they're also used to let's say some perks of working in bigger companies that they won't accept in smaller ones welcome to a day in my life as a twitter employee also started my morning off with an iced matcha look how delicious this food looks played some foosball with my friends to kind of unwind had to have our afternoon coffee so made some espresso and then before leaving for the day had some red wine um that's on tap which is a pretty big opportunity for juniors to actually take over that spot instead of them inflation is dropping all around the world and sure there are fears of conflicts all over the world right now and that stops hiring a little bit because companies are uncertain of the future but it is picking up a little. Just out of my followers alone, I got around 800 messages this year since January saying that they got their first job or they got a promotion. Obviously, it's not a huge number, but at the same time, it means that something is happening. People are getting jobs. People are getting hired. It's just a little bit more difficult and you can expect lower wages. What you need to do to truly stand out is to figure out the way to talk about what you do, how you do it, and to get as many people as possible to see it. So in a way, building some form of a personal brand, but not really as an influencer, but rather as a designer, because nobody really wants to hire influencers. They want to hire people who can make their bottom line better. So what you should focus on is to have case studies or designs that are talking a lot about improving the bottom line, improving the earnings, improving the conversions, and using design to achieve that. Because, you know, logically, who wouldn't hire somebody that's going to help them make more money? To get you started and get that initial experience, you can do some work for nonprofits and NGOs, of course, free work. And that way you'll have some actual real projects, not just fake portfolio projects to show. And that can help you in a great way to get your first real paid job. It's probably not going to be as well paid as it would have been a couple of years ago. But don't worry, you'll have to grind through the couple of the first years. And then after that, if you want to climb the corporate ladder, you can go that way and well, it'd be pretty comfortable financially. Or what I suggest to most people, start your own little agency, build cool shit in a small team. Basically, there is no ceiling to how much you can earn that way. But blaming everything around you for the tough situation is not going to solve it. You need to understand why it's happening what are the reasons and what could be the reason for a company to want to hire you because they all have reasons and most of those reasons are money oriented so if you can make them think that you're gonna save them money or you're gonna make them money then you're in a good spot to get hired so see it's not all bad you just need to take action and if you take that action subscribe to this channel we're all gonna have a beautiful day